Welcome back to 13 Motorsports, guys. If all goes according to plan, you're gonna hear this bike fire up by the end of the episode. Stay with me. All right, guys, so one of the main reasons I wanted to mimic the stock subframe to a certain extent was I wanted to reuse the factory undertail tray. And the reason I wanted to do that was because this has my mounting points for my battery, for the PCM, and a couple other things. And I didn't want to have to remake all of that with my subframe, so I want to make this to where it can be used with my subframe that I built. I'm not going to use the whole thing. I'll probably cut it, say, maybe along this line here, so I get rid of all that but I can keep this and the mounting points here. So what I need to do is I need to look at my stock subframe, which I still have, and figure out exactly how this mounts on there and then replicate those mounts on my subframe. That way I can use this under tray and I can get all this bracketry and all this wiring, get it up inside the subframe where it belongs so that you're not seeing it anymore. So let's get started. All right, so this is great news. Uh, it looks like it's a very, very simple setup on how this is mounted in here. There's a crossbar up along the top edge here that's got two slots cut into it that this thing slides into and then on the bottom it's just a flat piece across that has a hole drilled in it for a centering dowel and then this plastic piece just sets right in there so that's very easily something i can replicate on my subframe and that's exactly what i'm going to do i'll probably cut it just right back here after these mounts and get rid of from here back because i don't need that let's get going so i'm going to want to measure from these lower mounting points up to this piece here to know exactly how far back I need to put that so I can make that in the tray work. So that's my first measurement. Measure from here back to the center line here and then I'll make up a piece of steel to go across and weld that into my subframe. All right, so this is my piece of 16 gauge steel that I'm going to use to be my cross strap, but I'm going to try to mimic the way the factory one was done and do a bead roll down part of it to give it some extra strength before I weld it on there. So I'm kind of excited because I don't really get to use, get a chance to use my bead roller very often. So we'll give it a shot and see how much it deforms it. All right, you guys, a couple of small bends later, a little bit of work with the flap disc, and this brace is all made up. It's ready to weld onto the subframe. Okay, so you can see here, I've used a small C-clamp to kind of clamp it into place. I've measured it on both sides. It's clamped on both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and tack it here and then probably finish weld it up. All right, you guys, so there's another important point I wanted to cover with you here. So you've been watching me work on this rear section here and I've got the tail section mounted on there. I mounted it at three different points as you saw, but it's really important when you're doing projects like this to take a step back. Now, I mean that literally, do that as best you can. Step back, step away from the project, view it from a distance. If you can, 20, 30 feet away. 
sometimes when you get so up close with these things, it's like it, it's all coming together and it feels great. And then you stand back and look at it and you're like, wow, that, that really didn't come together the way I thought that it would. Uh, something, when you're too close to something, sometimes it's hard to see its flaws is what I'm trying to say. So literally, step back, step a ways away from it. And sometimes if you're stuck in a small box, like my shop I had before was about 10 feet by 15 feet, you couldn't get far enough away from it to appreciate it. So every now and then I would roll the bike outside and walk a good 20, 30 feet away from it, examine it from every angle and see if it's coming together the way you want it to. In this case, it's not. I uh, put this tail section on here. It's tilted too high up. I'm not feeling it. I'm not. I, I have always loved this tail. I've always wanted to use this tail, but something about it right now, the angle is wrong. I don't like it. So I'm going to redo it. I'm going to get rid of this rear mount here. It's going to be tilted down probably a good inch, inch and a half. And it's amazing how much that changes the lines of things. But again, the only way I saw that, because I worked on it and I, I thought it was all coming together right. Oh, it looks pretty good. It's mounted nice and firm now. It's sturdy. And then I stepped away and I thought, you know what, man, that just, it just doesn't look right. It's got too much of that German Street Fighter feel right now. They've got the really kicked up tails. Now it's not as extreme as that, but it's ruining the lines here and it just doesn't work. And as much as it's unfortunate that I'm going to have to redo some of my bracketry I built in here, I spent time on that and I don't want to consider it time wasted because now I have a good idea of how I can redo it. But if it's not working for you, you got to change it. You just can't. You can't go compromising and cutting corners and saying, well, you know, I already, I already put the time into it. I'm just going to live with it because that sort of stuff digs at you and digs at you and digs at you. Ask me how I know. Okay guys, so a little bit of information before I continue. Originally what I was trying to do is I was trying to reuse the stock ZX-10R taillight because it's already an integrated taillight. It has LED everything. It's, it's a nice taillight and I wanted to reuse it. But yeah, as you can see, it's something of a funky shape there. And it just wasn't going to work out with my tail section. So what I went ahead and did instead is I looked for something that worked for my purposes and I found it. So a Honda 1000RR taillight, same type deal, it's LED integrated turn signals, that sort of thing. But this one has a more aesthetically pleasing shape and an easier shape to work with. So I just clearanced my tail section for that. There's a little bit of final trimming left to do, but basically I've got that all trimmed up now and we'll go ahead and mount it up and you can see what it looks like. Okay guys, so I'm gonna be doing some grinding on some fiberglass here and as you probably know, Fiberglass is extremely messy and it's harmful if you inhale it. So generally it's best if you can use a face mask of some sort. I'm gonna be using the face mask, this mask, and also my ear protection as well. So just make sure you're all covered up when you're working with fiberglass. All right, so right now I'm gonna continue on working on the controls. I wanna get these handlebars finished mounted, get the new grips on there, get these ready to go. And there's a couple of things I need to do to do that. First of all, I need to get my ignition switch installed, so I need to remove the bars so I can get the top triple clamp off so I can actually put the ignition switch back in there. And then I need to drill some holes for the controls here so that they will bolt solidly. I'll show you that later. And then like I said, put the new grips on. Then we'll move on from there. Okay, there we go. Got the new bolts bolted in there. Normally when you go to take these things apart, these will either have some tamper-proof style bolts in them, or in this case, there were actually uh, bolts that were basically had a rivet on the top, so you had to drill them out to remove them. And of course, that's an anti-theft thing, so you can't just yank this thing off and 
steal the bike in an easy way. But in my case, I had to remove this. So I went ahead and drilled those out and then spun out the original bolts. And now I just replaced them with normal bolts. All right, let's put it back on. All right guys, exhibit A of why you should always have everything installed that you're going to be using when you're building different components. I did not have my ignition switch installed before. Now that I do, it's interfering with where my gauge is mounted. So I either have to move my gauges or I have to modify this casing here to make it work. Okay, so what I did to get around that was I went ahead and just tilted the whole gauge mount back just a little bit, just enough to clear the ignition switch there. Uh, it doesn't need to have crazy clearance because again, you, there's no interference when you're actually turning because it all moves as one unit. So just a little tilt back there and it's okay. I need to sit on the bike, make sure that that angle of the gauge is going to work. If not, I'll have to cut this off and redo it at a different angle. Okay guys, so what I need to do now is I'm trying to get my controls, all my switches mounted on the handlebar. And the factory uh, clip-ons, they have a little nub. If you look here on the inside, right there in the middle, there's a little nub that locates these things, keeps them from spinning around the bar, moving left and right, that sort of thing. So that's why I need to replicate it. I need to drill a little hole inside the handlebars so that'll take up that nub so that these things won't move around on me. So what I need to do is I need to place them exactly where they need to go, mark where that nub is going to be, center punch it and then drill it and then I can firmly mount these and then I can put my grips on. Let's get to it. We get to put the hand grips on. So first off, why don't we go ahead and get this old one off of here. So to get this old one off, we're gonna go ahead and just use a razor blade. Go slow, don't cut yourself. I just slice through it, make a slow pattern enough times until you finally get all the way through it and you can just peel it right off of there. Don't have to be too aggressive, just go slow. Make enough passes before you start getting down through the rubber itself. There we go. Then we start peeling it off. Just like that. There we go. Toss that in the trash. All right, so we're gonna put the grips on now. And normally I'm a proponent of the hairspray style. Basically you spray some hairspray in there so it's nice and lubed up. So you can just slide it on and then you can kind of adjust it where it needs to go. And then the hairspray dries and it's on there for good. That's my normal technique. However, I wanna try something a little bit different this time. I think I saw Ari Henning do this on the Motorcyclist channel. He used basically an air blower, an air gun. So he sticks it in there puts the air gun on it, and then puts air to it to expand it, and then it just slips right on. And I love to try that, it looked pretty slick, so I'm gonna give it a shot. If that doesn't work, then I'll go back to my tried and true hairspray activity. So let's give it a try. Well dang, that worked pretty good. I'm pretty excited. Couple of adjustments here. I think I'm running in just a little bit more. But overall, oh yeah, look at that. Ha! That was cool. I like it. 
Now I just gotta get this centered. There we go. That's cool. I like that trick. I'm gonna try it on the other side as well, see if it works just as well. Also guys, another important thing to remember when you're doing these, they are different. One end is going to be larger because that's to go around your throttle tube. So there's gonna be a smaller diameter one that goes around the bare end of the bar. There's gonna be a larger diameter one that goes around the actual throttle tube itself. Don't mix them up. I'm also not using the correct air blower for this. I should be using my smaller one. Unfortunately, that's at work. Again, just a little bit of adjustment, but overall, that's gonna be just fine. New grips, on. All right, you guys, great news. I managed to make a bunch of progress. I'm ready for the final mock-up right now. So I'm gonna put it all together and hopefully even go for a test ride with it and make sure everything is good before I take it all apart for paint. I'll show you here. Here's my subframe. Got the subframe all finished up. So I'm pretty excited about that. Got some mounts for the tail light in there. Mounts for the actual tail fairing on there. Mounts for the exhaust bracket. So it's a, it, you know, it's a fairly uh, complicated setup. I, this is something I probably shouldn't have done. I should have stuck with a stock setup, but whatever, it's custom, it looks good. I'm happy with it. So let's put it all together. Alright you guys, this is legitimately the very first time I've tried to fire this thing up. I just now rolled it outside, I threw a little bit of gas in there, cleaned it up a bit. Let's give it a shot. Well, not hearing the fuel pump prime. Oh, there we go, kill switch. Ha! Oh yeah, that's right.
I can live with that. Victory! Man, that felt fantastic to hear this thing run again. It's been 233 days since the last time this motorcycle was ran. In fact, the last time it did was when I threw it on the ground at the track. So it was really great to hear it run again. Uh, I did take it for a real quick spin around the neighborhood, just around the block, just to make sure everything is working okay. I don't have the lights hooked up yet, so I don't want to go any further than that. But everything seems like it's working just fine. So now I'm going to blow it all apart again, and I'm going to do the body and paint on it. I am not the world's best body and paint guy. I have done it in the past. It's not something I enjoy doing, but I just don't have the money right now to pay somebody else to do it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You'll see the process of that, and I do have a special surprise with the paint job coming. So stay with me next time on 13 Motorsports.